This is a video for AQA Mechanics, Dimension Analysis Section 1.1, where we're looking at the idea of dimensions of quantities and units. Any quantity in mechanics can be expressed in terms of three fundamental dimensions. And those dimensions are mass, length and time. And they're represented by the letters, capital letters, M, L, and T. Now, dimensions shouldn't get confused with units. However, units are useful, particularly when we're trying to work out the dimensions of more complex uh, quantities. So, the SI units, of course, are kilograms, meters, and seconds. So, as an example of that, consider finding the dimensions of velocity and acceleration. Well, first we could look at velocity. We know that velocity is uh, units are meters per second, that's meters second to the minus one. So if we know that the units are meters second to the minus one, then that is a length and then time minus one. So the dimensions of velocity the dimensions indicated by the square bracket are L T to the minus one. And in a similar way for acceleration, then because we've got meters per second squared or meters second to the minus two, we've got L T minus two. And as I said, the square bracket you can read as being the dimin dimensions of So now I want to consider four other quantities, the first one being density. Now you probably know that density rho is equal to mass over volume, and therefore the dimensions of density, the dimensions of rho, or the dimensions of mass, divided by the dimensions of volume. Uh, mass, of course, is just indicated by m, and volume is a length cubed, L cubed. So we've got M over L cubed, or M L minus three. And the other way we could have considered that would be to have looked at the units. Of course, the units are kilograms, meters, minus three, or kilograms per meter cubed. Force, well, we've got a, a, an equation for force, F equals MA. So we can say that the dimensions of force will be equal to the dimensions of M multiplied by the dimensions of A, acceleration. We'd already seen that uh, acceleration uh, was given by LT to minus 2. So therefore, the dimensions of force are m l t to the minus two. Now, in this case, the the units of force might not have been a great deal of use because you probably know that the units of force are newtons. However, a newton is equivalent to a, um, a unit of kilograms meters second to minus two. So there you can see if we use that unit, the sort of derived one, then we can see we've got mass, length, and time to minus two. Pressure is force over area, so that the dimensions of pressure will be the dimensions of a force divided by the dimensions of area. Well, we've just derived those for force, m, l, t to the minus two, and an area is length squared. So therefore, the dimensions of pressure are m, l to the minus one, t to the minus two. Finally, energy. Well, we've got kinetic energy, for example. 
as being a half mv squared. Uh, now a half is just a number, so it's dimensionless, we would say. So therefore, the dimensions of energy, if we use that mv squared, will be the dimensions of mass multiplied by the dimensions of v squared, velocity squared. So that will be mass. And remember, we derived velocity earlier as being um, length t to the minus 1. So it's that all squared. So in total, then, we've got m mass, length squared, and t to the minus 2. Well, on the next slide, is just shown nicely printed out for you, so if you wanted a, a, a copy of that, then that's the slide probably to keep. One or two that you may not have come across before, maybe thought about, or you can come across the idea of the quantities, but not thought about any units at all. Well, one would be uh, angle theta. And one thing we can think about angle is how we define a radian. A radian defined as the arc length divided by the radius. So we can see there that we've got two lengths, one divided by the other. So the dimensions of theta would then be equal to the dimensions of s divided by the dimensions of r. But of course these are both lengths, so we've got length over length in other words, it has no dimensions. It's what we call a dimensionless quantity. Well, a couple of other quantities now. Firstly, frequency. Well, frequency is the, the number of beats per second. So we've got beats, of course, and that's just a number. So that doesn't have any uh, units. So we've got then per second, in other words, 1 over second. So the dimensions of frequency are 1 over the dimensions of seconds, or in other words, t to the minus 1. And for angular speed, well, angular speed is radians per second. Radians, uh, we've said again, is just counting. Um, so and radians don't have dimensions. So again, we've got per second. So the dimensions of angular speed will also be t to the minus one. Well, here we've got a formula that you may or may not be familiar with. In fact, that doesn't actually matter. The the formula is t equals lambda x over l, where t is a force in a spring, and x and l are both lengths. X is the extension, a length, and L is the natural length of the spring. So we were asked here to work out, well, what are the dimensions of lambda? Well, because X and L are both lengths, then we can see that they sort of cancel out, and therefore the dimensions of lambda are going to be equal to the dimensions of T. And as T is a force, then that must be equal to M L t to the minus 2, as we had before. Well, that concludes uh, this video on dimensions and quantities of units. In the next video, we'll be continuing with this idea and looking at something called dimensional consistency, where we make sure that in formulae we have the correct dimensions of both sides of an equation.